morning. Good morning. Bill and Beverly, good morning. I am blessed that you're here. We are too. You are, do you have anything you want to say to the folks? Just that Jesus loves, loves you. Jesus loves you. That's, a, that's, that's from Bill Hewitt. And he, every, um, every Thursday night at 7, he, t- he speaks of the book of John, teaches from the book of John. He, why do you like the book of John so much? Because it, it explains, uh, it paints pictures of what Jesus said and, and did, how he reacted with people, and how they, he reacted to him. It, it tells stories. Jesus loved telling stories, didn't he? Yeah. I, I love the fact that, that God uses parables in the Bible to, to uh, hide the truth from the learned and wise, but to reveal the truth to those such as little children. For it says in the Bible that, that in order to enter the kingdom of God, you must enter with the faith of a little child. And uh, I just love the use of parables in the Bible to tell stories, because one of the things about, about stories is you kind of, as you listen to a story, especially one in the Bible, you kind of figure out, who am I in this story? And, and it's, it's, a, it's a great way to kind of apply truths in the Word of God to your own life. So... Good morning. It's 9 a.m. here in Central Oregon, uh, Pacific Northwest USA, and this is The Way. Uh, if you tune in later want to watch the service again, uh, you can go to our website and uh, just find the link and, and watch it again. And very, very soon we'll also have it on, uh, I keep promising to do it, I need, need to do that. Uh, we'll have an audio-only version of the live uh, webcast uh, here at uh, Ephesian Vision Ministry in Bend, Oregon. Um, the the service that we were going to use to do that, we've pressed into service for another calling, and we had another ministry approach us, uh, Provision Ministries, with a, just a hunger to uh, teach the Word of God in foreign languages. And the first language we have is Japanese. Provision Ministries here in Bend, which is also uh, using space in this building, uh, just has a hunger to do this, and so it's their ministry uh, Ephesian Vision Ministry is providing the infrastructure and the um, the IT support, and uh, we provide the computer and the internet bandwidth and so on and so forth. And so they they pay us for that service, and we're glad to do it. We just jumped at the chance because it's something God's really put on our heart too, to spread the word of God. Um, the word of God will be preached to all nations, and then the end will come. That's what it says in the Word of God. Um, so we just have the hunger to to go out and make this. There's, there's some things that, that I don't know if, if you have this. I, I know Bill and Beverly probably do, but you just go through seasons with God where it's like he's just he's kind of, I don't want to say harping on a theme, but there's just a central theme on what he's trying to get to you. And, and one of the things he's telling me right now is to go and make disciples of all nations. He said, go. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. Um, I spoke to one pastor who said, well, I believe that, that the people will drive by the church and they'll see all the cars in the parking lot and they will be compelled by the Holy Spirit to be drawn in. And that will happen. But Jesus, in the Word of God, says, go. Go and make disciples of all nations. I'll bet if you think back in your own life, somebody at some point came up to you. Somebody went. Somebody followed the Great Commission and, and go. They went, they came up to you and they explained the gospel or they planted seed or they watered the seed of the word of God and it sprouted in your life and you accepted Jesus Christ. Chances are that you probably weren't driving by a church and said, well, I think I need to go in. That does happen. But Jesus said to go. And so that's what we want to do. We want to go and make disciples of all nations. And uh, we have a Japanese stream. It's audio only teaching. We do have uh, a person that's available to us here in Bend that um, grew up in Japan, was born and raised in Japan, and um, was lived there until she was 19. Then she went to, um, I believe, the University of Montana and met her husband there. And they got married, and they now live in Bend, Oregon. But the cool thing about um, having her here is apparently there's certain aspects of Christianity which do not have a direct translation in Japanese, such as the Holy Spirit, such as baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so you need somebody who understands that culture to teach 
that truth that is in the Word of God because if you just there's no direct translation. And so she has to figure out a way, knowing that culture, to explain that concept. And so we're blessed to have her there, and we believe that uh, Japan is one of the ones we want to reach out to, especially with the tsunami and the earthquake. We, had, we did an interview the other day that was arranged from, by the International Association of Healing Rooms in Spokane, Washington, with the head of the healing rooms in Japan. Uh, Soshi, I, 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 uh, Taksami and Shoshi, I'm, I'm sorry, I've got your names all wrong, but, but I'll, maybe next week I'll, uh, or maybe at 10.30 service, I'll go find the names and try to pronounce them right. Beautiful people. And we did a Skype phone call with them and, and listened to their heart about Japan. And one thing that she said that stuck with me was that um, she's praying for revival in Japan. And she said that revival will come to Japan not how you as a Western church think it will. In other words, don't, don't come in with a preconceived notion of, of this is how God's going to work. This is how God's going to work in Japan. Uh, it's better to go to the people of that culture and say, you know, what does revival look like to you? How can we come underneath you and support you? How can we work with you as brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ to, to bring that revival about? And so we partnered with them as prayer partners for the healing of Japan and for the, the revelation of the kingdom of God to Japan. And Japan is one of those countries that understands kingdom because they've had kingdom rule in their past. So, and right after we did that, then kingdom investments or I'm sorry, Provision Ministries came to us and said, well, we want to do these Japanese, we want to do these foreign languages. Well, which one do we start with? Well, why don't we start with Japanese? And so it's like, you know, God's opening these doors, and it's just amazing how God works. If you want to get, if you want to have excitement in your life, if you're bored with your life, and you just want to have, in, in Disneyland, they call it an e-ticket ride. E-ticket ride are those big roller coaster rides where it's just really, really exciting e-ticket excitement then develop a relationship with Jesus Christ and he <laughs> you will not be bored there are some times that, uh, that you'll think I should be scared to death uh, but there's this peace that comes over you there is, there is excitement in following uh, the will of God in your life there is nothing as exciting as following the word of God and the word of God speaks of sitting at the banquet table of the king would you rather sit at the banquet table of the king and have all of these delicacies before you, all of this food, or would you rather go to McDonald's and have a Happy Meal? Uh, the enemy wants to give you a Happy Meal. He says, oh, I can cook this in three minutes and you can have it and you can be satisfied. And God says, take your time and come and feast at the banquet table of the king. Sometimes to get there, you have to go through some stuff. But the banquet is there laid out. And the banquet I'm talking about is the love of Jesus Christ. Because with the enemy, I wasn't going to talk about this this morning, but God wants me to go there, so I will. The enemy is giving you this, this um, lie, this, uh, you can have it quick. There's certain things about God and certain things about the enemy that as you've exposed to them over time, you, you see certain characteristics. And the enemy always wants you to take shortcuts. I'll take shortcuts. Oh, you can have it now. Uh, you, want, you, want, you want to be loved, this he says to women and men, but especially women and young ladies. Oh, you want to be loved? Just sleep with the guy and, and he'll love you. Well, that's not what he wants, but that's what, she, that's, that's what she needs in a relationship. And so the enemy is saying, oh, you want it quick? We can do it now. Um, and here you go. And God is saying, no, 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 no. That's not what I have for you. I have for you a love like the banquet table of the king. But sometimes the journey to get there isn't microwave. It's cooked in the oven. And the banquet is laid out before the king. But sometimes the journey to get there isn't just going through the drive-in. Sometimes you have to go through some stuff. But once you get there, the banquet of love in Jesus Christ is well worth it. So, welcome this morning. Uh, we're going to be speaking in Isaiah this morning. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 11 and Isaiah 56 
uh, verse 1. And uh, glad to have you with us today. I think we'll just get right to the preaching of the Word of God. Oh, Lord, Let it, let's pray first. Lord, I just pray for the words of the Holy Spirit. God, the Word became flesh. The Word became flesh. Lord, I pray this morning that we will see you revealed in your Word. Lord, I pray that the words I speak this morning are not the words of a man, but are the words from the Holy Spirit. And Lord, it's not anything I've done to deserve it. But God, it's just being a willing vessel to allow God to work through me and through um, the words that I use. And Lord, even this morning, you're giving me stuff that I hadn't even thought about talking about, and yet you're, we're going down this, uh, some people call them bunny trails. Some people call it spirit-led. Um, so Lord, as we go down these bunny trails this morning, Lord, we're following the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. For Lord, we know that it is your will to see the captives set free. We know it is your will to see the sick healed. We know it is your will to see the lost saved. For Jesus said, I have come so that no one will be lost. It is the will of God that all come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Lord, speak to us today. Speak to us today. John said in, in the book of Revelation, churches, listen to what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches. Listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Sometimes the Spirit of God speaks in a small whisper. Let us to be attuned to what the Holy Spirit is saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. This is going to be an interesting sermon because it's like I sit down and, and say, okay, God, what are we going to talk about? And I get something and I turn to another page in the Bible and there's something else. And, and even this morning, now, um, as you really open yourself up to, to the Holy Spirit, uh, he just kind of pours out of you. And I think one of the reasons he does that is, is, is to teach us how to rely on the Spirit of God. And you can say, okay, well, how do I know it's the Spirit of God leading me and not my own flesh? To be Spirit-led, and, and you go down, um, down the path that you believe the Spirit is going, and then you see miracles happen. You see amazing things happen. You see people being set free then you know it's from God. You look at the fruit. A good tree will produce good fruit. When you're spirit-led, it's the spirit of God leading you. It's the water of life from Jesus flowing through you. Then uh, Jesus said to the woman in the well, you drink from this well and you'll thirst again. You drink from me and the water of living, the water from, of living, of, <laughs> the living water will flow through me. That's what I'm trying to say. Let me give you an example in my own life where that happened. Uh, part of the fruit of the Spirit is discernment, gifts of discernment, words of knowledge. And we're not trying to tell people's future, although sometimes that does happen. But words of knowledge happen in the New Testament, second chapter of Acts. The apostles would, would move in words of knowledge where somebody would come up to them and, and Paul or Peter would look and, and, and give them words of knowledge just based from what God was telling them. Jesus said, I only do what I hear the Father saying. Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. I think prayer is key to getting tuned in to what the Spirit of God is saying. Jesus said, I only do what I hear the Father saying. Jesus also said, greater works than I did, you will do in my name. Jesus said, I only do what I hear the Father saying. So how do you hear what the Father is saying? How do you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying? One of the ways is you get in the Word of God and, and pray. So let me get back to my story. Uh, I walked up in front of this church 
and we were asked to come forward with words of knowledge and I can't even remember what the first word of knowledge was and um, so I gave my word and then I was going off the stage God said we're not done yet go back so I turned around and went back to to, um, to the podium and the pastor said well what's going on I said well I'm not done yet he said okay and I really um, Carl Borovac at Celebration Church was where this happened and so Carl if you're watching I really appreciate you being open to allowing your people to be led by the Spirit um, I said there's somebody here that needs to hear a word of God and and I just had this this real urging in my spirit that somebody there really really needed to hear something and so I looked through the crowd I looked through the crowd and the very last girl just to my left and the very very last chair right to the front she was there and and, and she was kind of almost highlighted and it looked like she was going to cry and it was just like there was almost like a spotlight over her and she just stood out among the crowd there wasn't a light that shone from heaven but I looked at her and God said that's who you want to talk to and so I pointed my finger at her and I said God wants you to know that he loves you God wants you to know that he loves you. And she just burst out in tears. And she couldn't stop crying. And um, afterwards, I went after the service, I talked to her, and she said, I'm just going through some things in my life, and I just really, I really came to church today to hear from the Word of God, to hear from God. I needed to know that. I needed to hear that. I really, really needed to hear that. Now, if I had not been obedient, and turned around and went back and might have looked foolish because I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew that God said, you're not finished yet. And I pointed her out and I said what I felt the Spirit saying. And she was touched by God. Now, if I hadn't done it, hopefully God would have found someone else to do it. But I believe there are times where God wants to use you and use people that they're too afraid that they'll look foolish. They're too afraid that well, I don't know the Bible good enough. I might misquote the scripture. People might think I'm weird. Maybe I just won't say it. And, and the Spirit of God is quenched. <coughs> Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do, the, the Spirit of God, it's the will of the Lord that all be reached and none be lost and all come to the saving grace of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So allow yourself to be used by the Spirit. As you walk in a spirit-led life, over time, you, it's, it's like a friend. When you get to know a friend, you know that friend's characteristics. Have you ever had somebody, and I had this happen to me once, about it, somebody sent an email in my name. They forged it, put my name on it, and sent it out. This was a workplace that I was working at. And <clears throat> other people that read the email said, well, we knew it wasn't from you because it didn't sound like you. And as you walk in a spirit-led life, you know over time the character of God. You know what he's going to say. You know the tone of the conversation. You know his character. You know him. Um, Jesus said, the sheep know my voice and they will follow me. The sheep know my voice and they will follow me. As you walk with God, as you immerse yourself in your word, His word, um, you will know the voice of the Master. The sheep know my voice, and they will follow me. There was something inside of you. God created this place for the Holy Spirit because we are flesh and we are spirit. We were born first to flesh, but as Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, Nicodemus said, how, how do we enter the kingdom of God? And Jesus said, you must be born of the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You must be born of the Spirit. So we are, we are actually two entities here. We are a, a, a flesh body, but we are a spirit man as well. There is a Holy Spirit. There is a spark of life inside of us that is God-breathed. 
when God breathed life into Adam, he breathed life into Adam. The breath of God went into man and life came into man because the very essence, the very breath of God, the wind of the Holy Spirit breathed on man and it came to life. Holy Spirit is still on this earth today looking for who will be used to expand the kingdom of God. That, that All I said up till now has been stuff that God just put on my heart. Now I'm going to get to the sermon today. <laughs> um, one of the things that... Um, take a look at the time here. Okay. Um, there have been so many natural disasters and calamities and tornadoes and hurricanes and, that have really impacted the United States. And interestingly enough, it happened right after our president um, decided not to decide with Israel. And there's a lot of people saying that, that it's God's judgment on the United States for, for not um, standing by his chosen people, by the people of Israel. What I want to speak about today is not about the judgment of God, but what happens to nations and a people that abide in God. One of the numbers that God continually puts on my heart is 111. We're going to New Zealand November, November 11, 111, November 1st, 2011. And 111 is, is just a number that God's put on my heart. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 1. And I want to start in verse... 11. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings, of rams and of fattened animals. I have no pleasure. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. People think that God is just this bloodthirsty, vengeful God that needs uh, a Prozac, and he's just there with an attitude, and he's there, well, how can I throw, hurl lightning bolts? at my people today and test them and make them jump through hoops and if they're good enough then they'll I'll let them in the door. That's not what God says. God says I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you came to appear before me, who has asked this of you? This trampling of my courts. Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations, I cannot bear your evil assemblies. Um, when Jesus was on earth, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees were testing him, it says in the Word of God, and Jesus saw their heart. They would come and they would test him, and can you heal on the Sabbath? Because the law says you can't work on the Sabbaths. So if you heal on the Sabbath, you're working on the Sabbath, and you're breaking the law. And Jesus, when they would bring this test to Jesus, and Jesus saw their heart because inside, they weren't interested in following the law. Their heart was to trick Jesus Christ into um, disobeying the law and proving then that he wasn't the Son of God and he wasn't who he said he was. And Jesus saw their heart. He saw that the intention in their heart was evil. Their intention in their heart was to discredit the Son of God and not to follow the law. It was to just use to trick Jesus. So God says, I cannot bear your evil assemblies. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. And so many times I think when we go to church, um, we need to make sure that, especially if you're taking communion, make sure your heart is right before the Lord. And that isn't saying, that doesn't say that, that we're perfect. Because we all have sins that we are still working on. Our walk with God is being worked out in fear and trembling. Our walk with God, we are being transformed into the likeness of Jesus. Transformed is a process of changing from this point to this point, And we are not perfect yet. But the condition of our heart needs to be to rend our heart and not our garments. One of the things that happened, uh, I love the Old Testament because there's a very picture of of what God wants. And in, in the old days when something very bad would happen, the, Jew, the Jewish leaders, they would tear their garments, rend their garments. And God says, what I want to see instead is to rend your heart and not your garments. 
Your garments are just what people can see on the outside. And Jesus saw your heart. What is your heart? And God is saying in Isaiah 1 that I'm tired of meaningless sacrifices. I'm tired of seeing you play the game. I'm tired of saying, seeing that you are a Christian. I'm tired of seeing that you're coming to church and, and saying all these prayers and worshiping my name and then going home and tonight sleeping with your neighbor's wife. I'm tired of seeing you oppress the wicked. Uh, I'm um, oppress the poor, I'm sorry. Um, I'm tired of having you come to church and praise me and then going out and there's somebody on the street that needs help because they're sleeping in the gutter tonight and you drive past them and don't give them a second thought. I'm tired of meaningless sacrifices. Uh, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. And plead the case of the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Interestingly, God would say this. You know, we are his children. We are created of God. And he could just say, well, do this because I am God and you are my subjects. But God says, come, let us reason together. Let us talk this out. Let us reason. And God is still saying that today. Read my word. Ask questions. Let us reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet, though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. You will have the banquet table of the king. If you are willing and obedient to me, the blessings of God last into a thousand generations. If you look, if you read in context, acts of God are acts of love. Acts of God are not hurricanes or tornadoes. But if you read, if you read the word and say, God, reveal yourself to me, you see things like this. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord is spoken. Let's talk to parents now. If you have a child that is just dis disobedient, doesn't do what, just does whatever they want, what is your response? What is, how do you feel as a parent? I've given this child everything. I've given this child food, clothing, education, and they just come and they want more and more and more. And they don't respect me. And let's say they, they speak ill of you in front of people and, and just don't show proper respect. What is your attitude towards them as you're the parent and they're the child? Okay. So what do you think God's attitude towards us is as we constantly rebel against him, as we blaspheme his name? And it's like, I am not going to continue to buy stuff for you if you're just going to continue to go out in public and speak ill of me. It's the same with God. Read, read again this. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best from the land. Praise God. Let us move ahead to Isaiah 56. No, I want to start with Isaiah 55, Invitation to the Thirsty. Isaiah chapter 55. And I think somebody here needs to hear this today. Because one of the challenges that we're faced with today, and I'm taking bunny trails all over the place. Um, it's like just, God, what are we saying today? And what do people really need to hear? Um, interesting God would do that. It would be easier if he would just say, okay, Dave, Next week we're going to preach on this and this and this and this and this and this. But sometimes I'll get up and start speaking and God will say, okay, somebody's watching now and they need to hear this. Because God has got a free will. And there may be somebody tuning in or coming here that needs to hear something. And because they have free will, God doesn't know until right then that they're going to tune in. That's just, that's just a Dave thing. Uh, I can't point that to the Word of God. It's just interesting that God, maybe it's just a walk of uh, learning to walk in obedience from myself in that you go this way and God says, okay, I want you to take a left turn here. 
And you say, okay, God, what are we doing over here? And then waiting for God to open his word up to you and to say, okay, here's what I want you to do. Uh, learning, learning to truly walk in that obedience is, is exciting. Sometimes it's a little scary, but it's exciting. One of the things I want to talk about right now is that there's a lot of people that are facing financial hardship. A lot of people looking for jobs. A lot of people that are really worried about what's going to happen tomorrow with the world. Um, I had a, a young lady come running into the newsroom I worked at uh, a few years ago when news of calamities and earthquakes and so on and so forth. And she came and she said, oh, I think the end of the world is coming. I think the, I think, I think the end of the world is coming. And I said, well, maybe, but I don't think so. Because in the Word of God it says that there will be wars and rumors of wars and still the end will not come. These are the beginning of birth pains. The end isn't going to happen today. The world isn't going to end tomorrow. The world isn't going to end May 21st. Did the world end May 21st? Yeah. No, it didn't. Um, so we need to walk with God like we're going to be here for another thousand years. One of the reasons I'm glad, and I would love to be taken to heaven right now. I think it'd be cool. One of the reasons that I don't want to be is this. Because if we're taken to heaven right this second, there are people driving by this building right now that are going to be eternally lost to God. Because at that point, the age of grace ends and the kingdom age begins. And if they've not made that decision, they're going to be eternally separated from God. So I'm glad God is tarrying because it gives us more time as the church to go and witness the love of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Now this is something somebody needs to hear today. I'm really excited about this. And this is something God just gave me before, we, before Bill and Beverly walked in the door today. Um, interesting God would say that. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. God, how can I do that? I have no money. Trust God. Isaiah 55, chapter 1. Ch I'm sorry, chapter 55, verse 1. Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters, come to the living water. You who have no money, come by and eat. Sorry I'm going over and over that, but somebody needs to hear that. Somebody needs to hear that today. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good. One of the things that God is speaking about is, is the nourishment, I believe, of the soul. Don't waste your life on the material things of this world. Jesus said one time that in, in the Word of God, my nourishment is doing the will of my Father. My food is doing the Word of God. Listen, listen to me and eat what is good. Give your ear and come to me. Hear me that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful promise to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander of the peoples. God made an everlasting covenant with David. David made some serious mistakes. David had a man killed, sent him to war, put him in the front, uh, Uzziah the Hittite, and, and took his wife after he had him killed in battle and had a child with him. David did some pretty bad stuff, but David had a heart after God. The thing I like about the story of David is not that he did bad stuff, but that he, did, he made some serious mistakes but he still was kept in the lineage of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God restored him. There is a restoration process. 
so much, here's another bunny trail that I wasn't expecting that I'm going to take a left turn here, God says. There are some ministries and some churches that have a one strike you're out rule where that person, oh my goodness, how could they do such a thing? We will have no further um, involvement with this person. They have sinned before God and we have nothing to do with them. And they turn their back on that person. Well, look what David did. And God still, there was a restoration process. The child that he bore with this woman died. And David prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed that this child would be healed. The child died because there was sin and there had to be a penalty. Something had to happen. God just couldn't say, well, uh, I know you really didn't mean that, so I'll heal the child and you'll go on. Just don't do it again. Something, there had to be, something had to happen. A, a very egregious, egregious error was made and something had to happen. The child died. But, and, and David came back to a right relationship with God. David was described as a man after God's own heart. Read the Psalms and Proverbs that David wrote, and you, you get a picture of a man crying out to God and, and pouring his heart out to God, even during the trials and, and tribulations of life. So there is a restoration process. Somebody is watching, and you're going through a restoration process, or thinking about um, uh, somebody in leadership that has sinned, that has fallen, and you're thinking of just distancing the ministry from them. Look to the Word of God, because there is restoration. Look at what David did, and look what God did. He kept him in the lineage. David was going along, whoop, took a turn here, went out of the will of God, came back and God restored him. And God still had him in the lineage of Jesus Christ. There is restoration. We cannot go out to people and say, oh, we forgive you. And, um, oh, we forgive you. And, and uh, how many times do we forgive our neighbor? Seven times, 77 times. And, and then a leader, somebody in leadership falls once and they're, thrown aside, thrown under the bus. Um, leaders are accountable, and the teachers of the law, the teachers of the Word of God, are going to be held to a stronger standard, a stricter standard. But there still needs to be restoration. If there wasn't restoration, why then did, did God forgive David and re restore him to the lineage of Jesus Christ? That's a, that's a bunny trail. Um... Isaiah 56. This is where I was initially going to start the sermon off. We finally got to it. Isaiah 56, chapter 56, verse 1. What I want to, what I want to stress this morning, one of the things, is acts of God are acts of love, righteousness, compassion, grace. We are in the age of grace. With all the stuff going on in the world today, all of the sin, sex trafficking, all of the greed, the corruption, we are oppressing the fatherless, we are oppressing the children like crazy out there today. But God's judgment has not fallen on us. Why? Because we are in the age of grace. We have time to repent and come back to, to God's will. So, instead of spending a lot of time saying, these are the punishments of God under the nation, Let's take a look at what God does to a people that are rightly related to him. Isaiah 56. Maintain justice. Do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand. And my righteousness will soon be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this. The man who holds it fast. And keeps the Sabbath without desecrating it. And keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let no foreigner who has bound himself to the Lord say, The Lord will surely exclude me from his people. And not let any eunuch complain, I am only a dry tree. 
to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose what pleases me, the God, uh, the Lord, and hold fast to my covenant, to them I will give within my temple and its walls. So let's look here what God is saying. Even the foreigner, if the foreigner comes into a land, into the land of the Lord, um, somebody who is who is not from Israel, somebody who is somebody a Gentile or anyone who's considered a foreigner. This is a lesson for us as we're looking at uh, foreigners. If the foreigner comes in and says, I love the Lord, I will keep his commandments, I will keep his holy day sacred, then God says, I will give him within my temple and its walls. He can come in and be part of the kingdom of God. To them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. Wow. So the eunuch, and you all know what a eunuch is. He's, he's just a caretaker. In, in He has no way to procreate. And, and uh, he was safe. He could take care of, of the wives. And the king didn't have to worry about if there was going to be a problem because he was a eunuch. Um. So he had no seed within him to, to procreate. He was lesser, I guess is what I'm trying to say, lesser than a real man. And the foreigners, he's not a blood kin. He's not of us. He's not of this people. He doesn't belong. He's a foreigner coming into the kingdom of God. Look what God says. To the eunuchs and to the foreigners, I will give them within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. Look at this. You want to talk about the acts of God. You want to talk about the acts of grace and compassion. Read that scripture and tell me God doesn't have a tremendous amount of grace and compassion. I will give a name and a memorial better than sons and daughters to the foreigner and to the eunuchs who come in and proclaim my name and keep my Sabbath day holy. To him who hears my voice and follows me, I will give a memorial better than my sons and my daughters. Wow. That's a good word. That's a good word today. If you've been involved in, in drugs or sex trafficking or whatever, and you know in your heart that that's not right, and you say... Man, this, this is killing people, and this is hurting people, and I want to come into the kingdom, but I can't because I've done too many wrong things. Go to Isaiah 56, verse, uh, starts at verse 3 and goes to verse um, da, 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 6. Mm. To them I will give within my temple and its walls a memorial and a name better than sons and daughters. And I'm not trying to lessen the sin of the people I've talked about, but what I am telling them is that as they give up that lifestyle and come and rend their heart before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and say, I want to be in the kingdom of God. I know this is wrong and, and God, please forgive me. God is saying, I will forgive you and you have a place in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't God awesome? Isn't God wonderful? I just, uh, the love and the grace and the compassion of God just never cease to amaze me. I will give them an everlasting name, and that will not be cut off. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to serve Him, to love the name of the Lord, and to worship Him, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and who hold fast to my covenant, those I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Jesus said his father's house will be a house of prayer. And here he's talking about eunuchs and foreigners and whatever, and people that love the name of the Lord, worship his holy name, keep the Sabbath holy, hold fast to his covenant. Those I will bring to the holy mountain. Those I will let go into the holy of holies. Those can enter by the blood of the lamb. When Jesus was crucified, the curtain in the temple was torn asunder. Everyone had access to the Holy of Holies. Before that happened, there was a, a, a sacred ceremony where the Holy of Holies was shrouded off with, uh, with a curtain. 
big curtain. You could not enter and see God because if there was sin in your life, you would die. In fact, when the priests went in, they tied bells to their feet so they could hear him moving around because if that, if that um, priest had sin in his life that hadn't been atoned for, God would strike him dead. And they tied a rope to his ankle so they could pull him out if God killed him because of sin. So we have this, in the Old Testament, we have this picture of the judgment of God. God is a just God. He, there is no unrighteousness in him. There is no injustice in him. Where there is sin, there has to be a penalty. That's why the, the, the child that David bore with that woman, uh, the wife of Uzziah the Hittite, had to die. Something had to happen because there was a transgression of the law. So now we see even still in the Old Testament, we see a picture of the grace and compassion of God. God is talking about foreigners and, and eunuchs. Oh, what time is it? Oh. Um, and saying, I will bring them to my holy mountain. They can come into the holy of holies. They will have a name and a memorial better than my sons and daughters. And I will give them joy in the house of prayer. I will give them joy in the house of prayer. Praise God. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. In the, this is Old Testament. In the New Testament, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. This is burning in my heart this morning. My house shall be called a house of prayer. God is calling his people back to this covenant relationship with him, where he wants a dialogue with you. He wants this, this communication, this two-way communication. He wants to speak to you. He wants to know you and be known by you. It's not a, um, a, a mistake that God uses a marriage between a man and a wife as a picture of the intimate relationship between the bridegroom and the groom, between the church and Jesus Christ. The church are people who call themselves believers of Jesus, who call the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, by whom uh, we have access to the Father. So there's this wonderful relationship picture of a marriage, the bridegroom and the bride, Jesus Christ and the church as becoming one. The two will become one flesh. The, the, the man will leave his mother and father and become one with the wife. There's this beautiful relationship of, of what's supposed to happen with the church and God. They're supposed to become one with the Father through Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. Beautiful picture there. And here we see that it's God's will that all come to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. I love this. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. Though they were foreigners, I will give them a place in my, in my house that's better than sons and daughters. Listen to the act of God. Listen to the grace of God. Listen to the compassion of God. It is not the act of God to send tornadoes and destroy the land. It is the will and the act and the mercy and compassion of God to bring foreigners into his family, to bring people who are in sin, the people who are lost, to set them free and bring them into the land so that they can have joy in the house of prayer. For, Father, for, for God says, My Father's house shall be called a house of prayer. We need to hear that as the body of Christ. His house, this house, your house, all churches in this planet shall be called a house of prayer. New Testament, Old Testament, same theory. Why does God want that so much? Because God wants to have a communication with you. God wants to have dialogue with you. In prayer, there's an act of worship. In prayer, there's a communication. In prayer, we hear God. Jesus said, I only do what I hear the Father saying. Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. You go into the life of Jesus and you see many times it said, and Jesus went alone to pray. Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer. So if Jesus did, the Son of God spent a lot of time in prayer, and he was the Son of God. 
we should do the same. He needed, he wanted, he desired this communication, this intimate relationship with God the Father. He did that through prayer. And we need to do the same. Jesus, when he went in to clear the temple, when everything was in disarray and things kind of got off track, when he said, we need to go baseline here, we need to go back to what's important, he said, not my, ho- my father's house would be called a house of worship or a house of teaching or a house of preaching or a house of evangelism. My father's house shall be called a house of prayer, says the Lord. Old Testament, we're seeing the same thing. For my house will be, held to, will be called a house of prayer for all nations. All nations. Praise God. The sovereign Lord declares, He who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. Okay. So it's a good thing God is tarrying because... I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. God is in this process of bringing people into the family of God in this season of grace. We are supposed to, we don't know the time or date when Jesus Christ will come, but we know the seasons. And one of the seasons we are in right now is a season of grace. And we need to be doing the Great Commission. We need to be going out and telling people about Jesus Christ. Well, you say, I, I'm afraid to do that. I don't know if they'll think I'm crazy, if they'll just think I'm another Jesus freak. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. You see here a picture of the compassion and grace of God, where he's willing to bring in foreigners and eunuchs into the family and give them places better than sons and daughters. So look and see the picture of the grace of God. Should we not also have that same compassion, that same grace for those who are lost? If somebody, if you saw somebody walking across the street and there was a big bus coming down the road and and they were talking or they were walking their dog or something, wouldn't you want to say, hey, hey, wait, wait, get out of the way. The bus is coming. You'll be killed. We, in, this, in this life, we act uh, and sometimes we'll run out and push them out of the way because we see the bus coming. So if we'll do that in this physical sense, why don't we do that in the spiritual sense? Hey, man, I see the bus coming. You need to get right with God. And that's not saying we take a Bible and say, and walk up to them and say, Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. We need to relate to them in a way that they can hear our message that the bus is coming. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. How do I tell your message in love? Share the truth in love love took a lot of bunny trails this morning covered a lot of ground some of it I just got at the last minute so I hope that this <laughs> I hope this was a blessing to you and instructional um, but I've just got to do what I believe God's got on my heart so we'll have another service at 1030 this morning it might be totally different from what I preached this morning we'll just see what God has in store but acts of God our grace, compassion, mercy. It is His will that all be saved, come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Be encouraged, be blessed. This service will be on the website again if you want to listen to it, and on our stream as well. Uh, the service is at Ephesian Vision Ministries, Bend, Oregon, 711 Northeast Butler Market Road. We cover your prayers, your financial giving. Uh, if you feel so led, if you're currently tithing and giving to another church, please continue to do so. Uh, If God calls on your heart to give to this ministry, we would greatly appreciate it. We need money for lights, for the streaming, for our call to go out and reach the nations. God bless, and uh, we'll see you at 1030. And if you need prayer, uh, we're open 24 hours a day here. 
And uh, you can call us at 541-323-2882, 541-323-2882. Something I didn't have a chance to talk about this morning is a online 24-hour house of prayer that we're getting involved in. Um, and we just signed up, and I'll be talking about that at 1030 this morning. I was going to talk about it this morning, but I ran out of time. So forgive me. We'll talk about it at 1030. God bless, and I'll see you later.